create with Fran Sydney. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. We are now in November and you know it just makes me think about ooh, two months and we have Christmas coming, it's so good. And in this episode, which is number 67, I would love to talk about something that is a little bit like the elephant in the room. It's about stress in our life when it is connected to conflict. How can we lower the stress if we realize that it's always coming from arguments? We might see that there is a lot of arguments in, in this moment, in the media, in the schools, universities, at work, in the home. It seems to be that everyone is arguing. So is there any way to agree to disagree and to actually have a constructive debate where people are not labeling, censoring, erasing and cancelling but we are actually really listening to the other people and understand that there is a conflict but talk to the right people about the real problem. So let's have a look and see what we can dig out from um, major studies and from everything else that I can talk about today that will help you. Let's tune in. First of all, just to make sure we are all on the same page, when we are in the middle of an argument and everyone is putting everyone else down and just diminishing them and calling them names, we all go into fight or flight, which raises our cortisol level, and that makes so that our immune system cannot work properly. Also, our pressure changes, our heart changes, the, the rhythm is different, is much faster, and we just feel like shaky and we feel like we just want to give up on that friendship or that relationship or, or working with a colleague that doesn't agree with us. And the point is, it's not agreeing with everyone about everything because we're all different, but realizing that the way that we have a discussion with others can really impact our mental health. And because my show is all about hacking, you know, using those little mind tips so that we can get more peace, it's so important to understand that we can have a completely different view on some topic, but we can still get along. And in fact, I know very, very many husbands and wives with very opposite opinions on loads of things and they are very happy. And this is not because they are constantly sacrificing for the other, but because they know the difference doesn't mean sacrifice. It means to acknowledge that there are other realities and that's quite good. And if you apply that, you look in lots of companies, it's not that every single person in the company has exactly the same ideas. No, they are working towards the same goals. And they all have their own ideas, their own opinions. They do not have to crush the other people. So what can we do to improve this so that our peace is raising and our level of fear and defensiveness is going lower and we can feel better, we can sleep better, we can feel calmer. That's what I really wanted to analyze today. So when we address conflict, we can bring the issues to light and we can feel a motivation to be engaged in a challenging conversation. When we do not address that and we just push it to the back and think, well, it's better not to even talk about this, then we might have a little bit of festering issues, it might escalate into a problem, it may become for our work colleague or for a family member a really difficult source of frustration, they might feel stress, they might feel pain because they feel they cannot talk to you. So it's very important to figure out who are you really having a problem with and, and talk to this person and instead of ranting or complaining on the back of somebody or attacking them calling them name uh, just talk about the problem just trying to describe the issue that you want to discuss in in a term that is acceptable for everyone not um, under the light of your own evaluation of this person or this person cannot be very clever this person is not very good just trying to avoid that and stick to what is the problem. That's the number one thing that I observe is very useful. For example, you might have a neighbor that really doesn't know how to train his dog and the dog can get away with everything, he's destroying everything and you want to 
say something to the neighbor because his dog is also trash in your house when we come around. So instead of saying, well, the problem here, you don't know how to train your dog, you're just letting get on with everything. That's not good, you know, you, you're dangerous. And instead you can calm down and say, well, it seems to be that the main issues here is how you're going to respond when your dog is acting out. Is that how you see it? So you try to change things instead of just attacking the person, just little words and how you say the words and also if you say it seems to be you don't have to be sarcastic you have to be you know kind of calm let's say that you for example are very fed up because nobody's understanding your work so the credit is taken away when you are working and then somebody else in the office is getting all the promotions or maybe somebody in your lab is getting the promotion and you're thinking well that's not very good and so instead of saying i should just quit because you're not respecting my work you know just taking all the credit that's not fair you can just breathe deeply and say how can can i say that properly and say right i would love to talk about how we credit our collaborative work in this moment, I don't think it's really reflecting all our contributions, mine and yours. What do you think? Can we talk about that? Maybe your colleague didn't even realize that you wanted to be credited. Maybe your colleague was trying just to get away, but it gives you the time to reflect without arguing back. Because if you start attacking, you don't respect my work, you don't appreciate, they're going to go into the, into the defensive. That is not going to be helpful. Another thing that is really good to maintain our calm when we talk about issues, because everyone has issues, there is nobody in the world that does not have issues, is first of all, name the problem. Don't name and label the person. Name the problem. Then you have to identify your own needs, your own interests. And then if you need the other person to do something, make a request that is very clear, is specific, and it's possible, this person can actually do it. So instead of being attached to the way they have to do something, just focus on what is your need. What is that these people need to do so that you are feeling good about this, whatever problem there is. So maybe the other person doesn't agree on your strategy, how to tackle the project. But if you, instead of attacking the person or making an evaluation of your character, trying to go into productive direction and give them a very clear request, I would like this project to be done by 10, then it doesn't matter how they're going to get there. The important thing is you need a project to be done by, by 10. Another thing that um, is very, very connected into how our communication can help us to be calm is to remember not to have argument when you are driving. This is typical of spouses. There are lots of spouses that sometimes sit in <laughs> with the other half and the other half can't drive or it drives like a maniac. It's very... You know, you just kind of, oh my gosh, I'm getting really worried about this person. So there are two things you can do in a car. You can argue and thus you can cause more distraction and you can cause, you know, some hurt feelings, somebody being offended and you might even get a cortisol level going upper and upper. So in the end, what's going to happen is every time you go into the car, you're going to have your heart racing very fast, very quickly, because you're used to be anxious when you are with your spouse or maybe with your best friend. Does it have to be a spouse? It's just, just the thing I was saying. So instead of saying, stop driving like a crazy person, we're going to get killed. Well, that's not very good, isn't it? It's not going to help and it's putting the other person down. I mean, I don't know who is the person with you that makes you feel like that, but maybe they can't drive, but I'm saying... You don't want to make them feel like that because that's not the way you're going to get the result. So what else can you do? You can change your wording. For example, if you're going at 70 miles per hour, 75, and it's a 60 miles per hour, you can say, well, do you mind? I get a bit nervous when you're driving this fast. Would it be okay if we stick to the speed limit and just see what they say? If you're not willing to, then maybe you have to have another conversation when you are not in the car because that's a dangerous place where to talk about speed another typical example is when we're talking about money money is always something very difficult and uh, for example let's say that you have two people living together in the house one is working one is not working 
And, you know, there is a time to think about what's going on here. And so there are two ways of talking about this. And one is to attack the person. It's, oh, you're so lazy. You're res- irresponsible. You know, it just, you know, you're taking advantage of me. I mean, honestly, you got your degree. You should be, you know, get out of this chair, stop your video games and get to work so you can do something here. What do you think? I have to pay all the bills. And that's the way of doing it. But how is the other person going to feel? He's going to feel like, all right, now I'm going to attack back because he just destroyed me. So if you kind of take this back in a minute, think, okay, what is that you want to have? What you want is a fair financial arrangement, right? So instead of talking about the behavior of the other person that is hurting you so much in such a way that it would destroy your relationship, you can say, okay, would it be okay to discuss how we can both contribute towards the household bills every month. I need a fair financial arrangement because I think that the one we have now is non-existing or it's just not working. Can we talk about this? And then that opens the door so the other person can say, oh, am I supposed to? <laughs> yes, you're yeah, supposed to contribute. You know, everyone contributes to something in the house. But that's a way that is calmer, so it doesn't get the other person to feel really worried. And if you are worried and the other person is worried, we are both very stressed up, you're just going to end up in an argument and it's not going to contribute towards your mental health. Um, Let's say peace and calm, which is the one thing that you always want to keep. So keep your goal to remain calm. Now, another typical thing that happens when people start getting their voice higher, they're talking faster, they started to use name, and what they also do, they put a lot of problems together. So they're mixing the problem that they came to the room to talk about with a hundred different problems. So it becomes very confusing. The other person starts looking back in the past, starts digging out what happened to them because of you. This is never going to end. And maybe in the end of the argument, you still have exactly the same problem. But you didn't come to the room for that. You came to sort out the problem. So I think it's a very important task to make it sure, you know, ensure that it's clear to the other person what is important to you. What is the need that you have? So that it's easier when you come to an agreement which one is your decision? Which one is his decision? You want to separate all the issues and you want to decide what is the most important thing. What's your goal there? What is your value? And then divide the issues and talk about them one by one. Maybe not only one go. You could take separate days and do them when you're calm. Do them when you're hugging if it's one of the people in your family. And if it's a work, don't do it in a problem in a problem day when they're stressed, when they're running, just define the problem, make yourself very, very clear. And instead of patronizing and calling people idiot or whatever, say, I would like to talk about how we're spending this money. Please wait for me to ask before you start re-explaining things to me. So there are loads of different things you can say. Just make sure that the other person is feeling that is heard that their opinion is important as well. There isn't just your opinion. And then one last bit I want you to talk about is parents with children. It is very easy to become really annoyed when our teenagers don't seem to go in the direction where we would like them to go. And I'm just quoting you a case of a guy that was just spending all his time playing baseball and his grades were not very good. And, you know, his parents wanted to have A grade so he could go to a top university. But this was not likely to happen because he would just always out playing basketball. And, you know, when you're in high school, it's very easy to be busy with sports and it's all very good. But the parents, of course, were going to be very upset that their child was not going to be able to go to this particular university that the child had expressed an opinion and interest in, in, in joining one day. So they have two options. One option is the the parents say, right, you're going to be taken off from your team. And then at that point, your son is going to go, well, I'm not going to go to college anyway. I'm not quitting the team because you're putting them in. It's an out-out. It's very difficult. But then the parents could think, wait, wait, could it be that my child can still play basketball, but have a B average instead of an A average? 
what what is the change that is that we can do now to make this possible so the parents then can talk to the the son that is doing so much baseball and say right okay we don't want a but can we reach a b if you want to stay doing baseball can we reach a b is it possible so it's not asking for the world and it's not taking away something very important which is sport and being with other people just for the sake of a university or college that you know teens cannot see that very very far ahead they don't realize it so they have to understand the parents are concerned but they also have their own concern and the parent is listening say i want you to be on the team but i expect to do at least a b can you do a b what can you do so that this b can happen so remember when there is an issue that you know the person can fix don't just tell them what to do just ask them what do you think that you can do to make this happen? That makes the brain start to work in the right direction. And my last words about this is to make sure that you have very, uh, very clear boundaries, very clear and explicit agreements. And when the agreement changes, make sure that this is clear to both and not just to one of the part. So if you have reach the resolution make sure that everyone is agreeing to the same thing there are no misunderstandings so there are areas that might be might be a little bit difficult to talk about make sure you go over it make sure it's clear for everyone that we are agreeing this is your task in the house this is your duty in the office this is what you do in your team make sure it's clear everyone has agreed sometimes when we have a lot of gray areas of who's doing what everyone expects somebody else to do it but nobody does it and what you have to do is know that there will be future conflicts because this happens, people have different ideas. And if you have no plan for dealing with a conflict, you're going to have problem. So what you want to expect that something will happen in the future and plan for it. Very calmly think, how, how am I going to be able to handle problems in the idea? So uh, in, this, uh, in the future, sorry, not in the idea. <laughs> I'm just speaking really funny today. So... If you are, for example, in a highly difficult position at work, when you know there's going to be issues because it's a very strong head of marketing that comes to you all the time, and you know, but you found a resolution today, so you can say, well, I'm really glad that today we found a way to work this problem out. I'm really glad we're able to discuss this. And if other issues come out in the future, can we talk about this? Can we make a plan? How can we discuss the problems in, in the best way so we, we get the best of each other out? How does it sound to you to make a proposal so they have an idea, they have a structure of how to discuss a problem without entering a large type of conflict, but actually just being calm. And it's very important to ask people, how could it be good for you or easy for you to communicate your problem with me in the future? Because some people are just not very good at handling it. Some people will be very passionate, talk about it, and then 10 minutes later, they forgot all about it. They don't care about it. They're just cool. But other people might not tell you the exact thing, what's their opinion. They might think you're not really productive at work. They might have some problems or how you implement something. You know, there could be family issues but they do not have the, the gut to tell you because they are terrified of having a bad reaction from you. So remember, you're not always right. Sometimes it's really 50-50. And the important thing, if you really care about your mental health, is to understand we're all different. It doesn't make somebody else wrong just because they're different from you. It's just their experience, their bias is different. And also, you know, everyone has his point of view because... In their life, they have a certain experience in a certain area. And that's their area of expertise. And that's all they're going to talk about because that's what they know. They don't know much else because they've been studying, uh, working or experience in that place. And you might know a lot about your own thing. But the fact that they don't know, it doesn't make them worse than you. They're just different. And all you need to do is to throw there a, a peace dove, you know, <laughs> no, you don't throw a dove, would you? But you just throw this bridge of peace and understanding when you say, okay, if we have difficulties, we can talk, we can see what is the most important thing for us. We can find a way forward. And I have to say that this is something I noticed looking back in my life. The best and happiest couples were not the ones 
where they were identical, they had the same things, same hobbies, same everything. No, it's the people that were more able to discuss things without attacking one another, without melting down, without throwing things, without smashing stuff, without going back to the alcohol and getting drunk because they had a discussion. They were able to discuss things in a civil manner, something that has very much disappeared in the in the arena of public discourse nowadays when we are actually destroying everyone else. We do not need to destroy other people. We need to understand what is important for them in this. That's the big question that we always have to ask. What is the value underneath their uh, passion in this problem? I wanted to close with an observation that sometimes we have blocks. They make it very difficult to to apply anything that I said before. And this block is when you see that the people are not bulging, they're remaining in that idea which is opposite to yours and might be a very important thing for your life what we are discussing. So it's important to understand to to find a way, you know, how did you get out of this? You have to shift your conversation. You want to shift it from your strategies to the needs. So um, if you're stuck on strategies or on positions, just shift your focus, talk about needs, step back, breathe deeply and remember you have to understand what is the important thing to the other person in this topic and then make sure that your own interests, what is important for you, they are clear and instead of clinging to your position, just Make it like an investigation. Be very curious about that. Because if you kind of attack the other person about their position, their position will solidify. But if you have a conversation about interests, about values, you're going to have movement and you're going to have dynamic in your conversation. So given this chance, open a broader dialogue and instead of arguing about the person, talk about the beliefs. You broaden it, they ask people about their experience. Ask them how they shaped their beliefs. What is the heart of it for them? So you can tell them things like, it sounds like you're very concerned about so-and-so. And can you talk about me? Can you talk about this problem and tell me how your experience has been shaped? Um, and what happened? How did this experience shape your thinking? And this will help you so much to understand how they got to that conclusion. It is so hard for you to understand. Okay, so that was it for today. And I hope you really enjoyed this uh, very short episode of only 23 minutes. And uh, if you liked it, please write a nice review of my podcast on iTunes or Podbean or whatever else you like. Um, I'm actually on bus Prats as well now. And uh, make sure that you can like it and share it with other people so more people can learn how to increase their mental wellness. So thank you for being with me and take care and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. You have listened to Create with Franz Sydney.